This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. One new feature with Excel is the ability to format a set of data as a table. The idea here is that you will take a patch range and tell Excel that that range is a table and it can be treated differently, allowing us to control the formatting, headers, footers, etc. If we take our basic accounts file that I've resaved here as a table, highlight the rows of data that I would like to convert into an Excel table and up on the home ribbon is an option format as a table. And in the drop down, I can choose the format style that I'm interested in. I might go for this darkish one. Now, because this is the first time that I'm choosing the option to format as a table, I'm asked, where is the data for your table? It's selected this area here because I pre-highlighted that area. And I need to tell it whether my table has headers, which it does. It has the months of the year across the top. And then OK. And my chosen formatting style is then applied. Whilst you're within the area now defined as a table, you'll find that on the ribbons, you have an extra tab here, Table Tools Design. If you click outside your table, that disappears. So that's a context sensitive ribbon. Back inside and it appears again. Now within this Table Tools Design ribbon, we can change the style immediately just by moving between those four or you can pop down and choose any of the others. Notice that there's no need for OKs or clicking. I'm just moving the mouse gently through the colors and it's formatting as I go. That way I can pick the one that I like the most. Quite like that orange one. And then click to finally take that. Now within that formatting, I have options for what I would like to appear. So we could choose banded columns and you can see the columns become banded, but because the rows are banded as well, it doesn't quite look as good. So I would recommend it's either banded columns or banded rows because both together just looks a little higgly piggly. Do we need a total row? Well, it adds one on. Now I already have one built in. So really I ought not to have built that in and allowed the table formatting to add my total row in. So I can remove the total row. Perhaps I don't want a header row. Take that tick off and my data I had in the header row is hidden. First column and notice how the first column then gets formatted bold or dependent on the style of the table and last column and the last column gets emboldened. But in this case, the last column is just another month. So I don't need the last column option. I can refresh the data if the data has been dragged in from an external source, which we explore in a future lesson. And I can export the data to a SharePoint list. There are tools. I can use this option here, convert back to range. And that effectively takes the table and turns it back into normal cells, which is where I was to start with. I can use the remove duplicates tool to delete duplicates from a sheet. And I can even summarize with a pivot table, which is explored in a future lesson. If I add more rows in here, if the rows are added within the table, so for example, where I've got food, if I inserted another row above there for fuel and spent some money on fuel each month and December, then that row is added in to the table. You can see that it's expanded. However, it may be that there's more data at the bottom. If I'm using a data list, I might add some more data at the bottom and that does not automatically add it into the table. I can use the resize table option to then select a larger area from here. Highlight an extra row there, even though there's no data, we can do it. And then OK. And you can see that the table is then expanded further down. So that's formatting in Excel as a table. Can be quite useful for lumping data together and aiding presentation where the table styles come into play. Notice how that's gone black with white text because I've got first column on. Turn that off and it goes back into the normal style. So it's worth experimenting with different layout styles and which of the options you would like on from your table styles. To turn this back to normal, it's convert to range. Do you want to convert the table to a normal range? Yes. Now it retains the formatting, but this is not styles anymore. This is just change the background color that we've seen earlier in the formatting lesson. And to take all that off, you would now physically highlight all the cells and manually adjust the background color, the font color, etc., etc. So quite a lot of work. Whereas with the table style, you just chose another style and it applied that style. So to turn your data into a table, you highlight it. 
format as a table, choose your individual format. It will then ask you if you want to highlight and change this range because you've highlighted it. Don't forget to tell it it has headers if it does. OK, and we're off. Now, as well as doing all the formatting, changing whether you want first column, first row, header row, etc., you'll notice that each column also gets a built in filter. Now, we do explore filtering in much more depth when we look at the data side of things, but these are just automatically added when you choose to format as a table. So there's a lot of little advantages added in. You may find it useful, you may not. It's certainly worth experimenting with if you've got a swatch of data.